flag patterns. What are they? What are they used for? How do you trade them? Do you draw the trend line on the wicks of the candles or on the bodies of the candles? Do they need to be big flag patterns or tiny flag patterns? Is there really a way to consistently make money from trading flag patterns? Hey traders, Steven here, your honest trading coach, welcoming you back to another video. In today's video, we're talking all about flag patterns. The first question we have to answer, what is a flag pattern? Essentially, a flag pattern is a small period of consolidation after a directional move in price in which after this small period of consolidation, if we see a breakout to the upside, the expectation is that the trend will continue in that specific direction. So for a bullish flag pattern, we would want to see a directional move out of price, then a small period of consolidation like this, a breakout like that big green candle. And after that big green candle, we would have the expectation of the market pushing higher. And for a bearish trade, we would be looking for a directional move to the downside, followed by a brief period of consolidation, followed by the breakout of that brief period of consolidation. After that breakout, the expectation is that the market will continue in the original direction before the period of consolidation, in this case, in the bearish direction or down. Sounds simple enough, right? Well, as a concept it is, but it's really hard to actually have set in stone rules for flag pattern strategies. What I mean by that is sometimes you're going to be confused about whether or not a flag pattern is actually a flag pattern. And what that's going to do is cause you to have some major inconsistency. So in today's video, I'm going to share with you my rules for flag pattern trading that I use to stay consistent and to have a set in stone rules based strategy. That way you can take this rules based strategy, go out, test it for yourself. And if you like it and you like the way it tested, you can go out and put it into your trading arsenal. So in today's video, I plan to tell you everything you need to know about flag patterns. If that sounds good, go ahead and click that like button. Go ahead and click subscribe if you're new because we come out with content like this each and every week. And I will see you on the other side of the intro and disclaimer. Welcome back traders. And now that we know what a flag pattern is, let's talk about why we would use flag patterns. Well, they can be an insanely profitable way to trade trend continuation if done correctly. But that if done correctly is in bold letters. Let me explain what I mean. When trading with flag patterns, what we're trying to do essentially is capture trend continuation in some way, shape or form using breakouts. So we're waiting for the market to have a big push up then the small period of consolidation and then have a breakout, right? And that breakout normally leads to higher prices. So if we can capture these breakouts consistently, we can make a lot of money in trending markets using flag patterns. Now, the question is, how do we do so in a consistent way? And that's why in this video, I'm going to be sharing a full strategy with you as well. And this strategy is not only a strategy that I have seen to be profitable in my own trading, but also a strategy that is rules based so you can actually stay consistent to it. Lastly, before we get into the strategy itself, when should you trade flag patterns? Well, you want to trade flag patterns after directional move in one direction or the other. We're looking at bullish trades right now. So we would want to see this big directional move, a new higher high in price. Then we would want to look for this period of consolidation. And I have a very easy way to do this and rules based way to stay consistent with this in the strategy that I'm going to go over right now. So now that we know what a flag pattern is, how we should trade them and when you should trade them. Let's go ahead and dive into a full strategy using flag patterns. Firstly, before we go over the entire rule set for the flag pattern strategy, I'm going to be teaching you today. I call all trend continuation breakout patterns flag patterns. So just like a regular flag pattern may look something like this. And we all know that's a regular flag pattern, right? But you may also see me call this a flag pattern. Although I know that's more of a pennant pattern or a regular triangle pattern, I call them all regular flag patterns. You may also see me call something like this a flag pattern. Although I know that is a descending triangle, I call all of these trend continuation breakout patterns flag patterns. Just in case there's any keyboard warriors out there that plan on putting something in the comment section, just wanted to make you aware of that. And lastly, before we get into the strategy itself, for stock traders, you will need to add volume to the strategy. And I'm going to go over some examples of that later on, but I trade primarily 
in the Forex market. And in the Forex market, volume works a lot differently and I do not use it. But if you're in the stock market, we will be adding a volume indicator to this strategy later on in the video. I will go over some examples of that. But for now, let's go ahead and dive down to some charts on the New Zealand yen and take a look at all the rules for this flag pattern strategy. Here we have a live trade I'm about to enter using this strategy. I thought to myself, what better way to teach you guys the strategy than showing you a trade I'm actually getting into live. We're gonna get into this with a market order. We're gonna risk a solid 2% of our total account value. The take profit and stop loss is correct. So let's go ahead and click the button. And there we are. So we're entered into this trade immediately down $215. Don't you love that spread? But anyway, here we are entered into this trade. So now that I'm in the trade, I'm going to go ahead and explain the strategy to you quickly here on this live trade. And then we will dive into some back testing on the New Zealand yen and take a look at a lot of examples to ensure that you have this information down pat and can go test it yourself and possibly use it in your trading arsenal. So for this strategy, we're going to add an indicator in order to give us more consistency. Indicators aren't to be used like a thousand of them on your chart and you're trading just based on an indicator for your entry reason. Things like that are not how I trade with indicators. I use indicators in order to give me a consistent rule that I can use while building strategies. So in this case, we have the 20 period exponential moving average. You will need to plot that on your chart for this strategy. And the reason is this strategy depends on that as one of its rules. So the first rule of the strategy is we need to see a move down and this move down must either be below or break through the 20 period moving average. This 20 period moving average is going to act as our trend filter. So what we're telling ourselves is if price is trading below the 20 period moving average, we're in a downtrend. So if we're in a downtrend, what we want to see is price be below, our 20 period moving average, then we want to see price come up and at least touch the 20 period moving average with a wick. What we cannot see is space. What I mean by space, if you look right up here, is we can see the wicks of candles touch like this. We can see the bodies of candles touch like this. We cannot see space between the 20 period moving average and candles. If we do, that invalidates this as a trade. But as long as we just see price touch the 20 period moving average with either wicks or bodies of candles, then we're still in a valid trade. What we're waiting for after that is we get our big move down. We get the touch of the 20 period moving average. What we want to see after the touch, and this has to come after the touch of the moving average is the creation of a swing low. Another swing low besides our lowest swing low that is either higher or exactly the same as our first swing low. I know that may have sounded a bit confusing. Let me go over that one more time. We want to see price create a pullback. That pullback must touch the 20 period moving average. After touching the 20 period moving average, we want to see a creation of a swing low. This swing low must either be at or above the swing low that started the pullback. If it is, then we have a valid, the valid bottom trend line of a flag pattern in our bearish situation here. So the flag pattern would look like this. We would go from the bodies of our candles here at the first low to the bodies of our higher swing low, which would be right here. With that being the case, we'd wait on the breakout, which we did. We got the breakout with this big red candle. This is going to be just speeding through it to get you accustomed to the rules. We're going to dive into a more detailed version of this when we take a look at some back testing on the New Zealand yen. So another nuance rule is that we're using the bodies of this swing low. So what we want to see is bodies higher than these bodies. We don't care about the wicks of candles with this specific strategy. And also when drawing our trend lines, we're drawing it from the bodies of the swing lows. So we want to draw it from the bodies of the first swing low that created the first initial pullback that touched the 20 EMA to the bodies of the second swing low that's either higher than or equal to the first swing low. So that was a quick rundown. Hopefully this trade will play out by the time this video is over. If not, that's fine too. I just wanted to show you that I actually use it in live markets and give you a brief overview of all the rules of the strategy. Now we're going to move on to the New Zealand yen and dissect this strategy even more and go through a ton of different examples to make sure that you are accustomed to all of these rules. I'll see you guys over there. 
I'm currently editing the video and it's actually the next day. So this trade has played out here on the Euro New Zealand. And as you can see, we ended up hitting targets very easily for that 1.2 to 1 reward to risk ratio after our rules based flag pattern strategy right here and the breakout right here. So big thumbs up. Go ahead and hit that like button for a winning trade. And now let's move on to dissecting this strategy. I already personally trade this strategy, which means I've already done a ton of back testing, but I thought it would be good to give you guys something to look at to make it visual for you. So what I decided to do was go ahead and test the last six months on the New Zealand yen. And what you see here is the results of those tests plus the written rules of the strategy. If you want to pause the video, take a look at the written rules and take a look at the results, which were... 31 trades in the past six months, 21 wins, 10 losses, 67% accurate, and that was with a 1.2 to 1 reward to risk ratio. Now, 31 trades is nowhere near a big enough sample size, but again, I just wanted to give you guys something visual to look at while I was going through the rules of the strategy. Let's go ahead and back up here, and let's pick a random trade to take a look at. We will go with this one oh, right here. So let's go ahead and think back to the rules that you just learned and talk about why this is a valid trade. So in this situation, what would we be looking for? Well, first off, we wanna see that the price pushes above or either is staying above the 20 period moving average to show us we are in an uptrend. The way I break down strategies is through a system I call CEST. A lot of you who have been with the channel for a while are probably accustomed to hearing me say this. This above the 20 period moving average would fall under conditions. The next thing we want to see is the touch of the 20 period moving average, another condition. After that, we want to see a swing high created and this swing high must be lower than the previous swing high. So if I draw a horizontal line and it's, I'm counting this from the bodies guys, not from the wicks. So from the bodies of these candles, these bodies must be lower. I need to see price push up, make a new high, the pullback touch the 20 period moving average after touching the 20 period moving average, I need to see a lower high. After that lower swing high, I have all I need to create the top of my flag pattern trend line. And the way I pull the top of that flag pattern trend line is from the bodies of the candles. So if we were drawing this out like we would an actual flag pattern, it would look something like this. We would have our flag pole is what it's normally called. We would then have the bottom of our flag and the top trend line of our flag up here. We would be waiting for the breakout right here. We'll go over stops and targets in a second. I wanna get through a couple of bullish examples and a couple of bearish examples to give you a good understanding of all the rules before we go over entries, stops, and targets. So let's take a look at another example. Here, we have another example. What would we, what would we be waiting for? When you say three words that start with W all in a row, it gets really weird. We are waiting for price to push up, stay above our 20 period moving average. Is that what we're doing? Yes, it is. We want to see price push up to a high. We then want to see price pull back and touch the 20 period moving average. After that, we want to see a new swing high created. This swing high must be at least lower or at the same exact level as our first swing high before our initial pullback. So if we draw a horizontal line here, you will see that this swing low in terms of the bodies again guys i'm using the bodies in terms of the bodies this swing high is lower than this swing high with that being the case and remember our other rule which is we cannot see space below the 20 period moving average during any of this if we see space as in a candle comes down here and does not touch the 20 period moving average at all not even with a wick if we see space then we invalidate this as a trading opportunity if we see space at any time here, this is not space. The wick is still touching the 20 period moving average. But I digress back to the actual flag pattern itself. In this case, our trend line would look something like this. We would have the top of our trend line coming from the bodies of the initial high here down to the bodies of our second swing high right here. And at this point, we can draw in the bottom of our flag pattern if you want to. I don't really do this ever. I just draw the tops of them because of the fact that that's 
what I'm waiting to see the breakout of. Once we get our breakout candle, we'd be entering on that candle and the market did push higher. And according to my stop loss rules, I ended up winning that trade. So there are a couple of examples of the bullish version of this strategy. What I want to do now is take you to a couple of examples of bearish versions of this strategy before we move on to discussing entries, stops, and targets. So here we have a bearish example and let's go through all the rules, all the conditions. We need to see price below the 20 period moving average and pushing down. Is that happening right now? Yes, it is. With that being the case, what's the next thing we look for? The next thing we're looking for is the touch of the 20 period moving average that does not have space above the 20 period moving average. We can't see a candle up here that's not even touching it. So we want to see that. Let's go ahead and check and see if that happens. There's the touch of the 20 period moving average. So we have our first condition met, right? What's the next thing we need to see? After the touch of the 20 period moving average, we want to see a higher swing low body wise than our initial swing low before the pullback. So let's see if we get that if we continue pushing forward. And the way I normally count this is as soon as I get a fractal move, which is higher low, lower low, higher low, that turns this into a swing low. So at this point, do we have a swing low there? Yes, this is when we start to draw our actual lines. We go from the bodies of our initial swing low to the bodies of our new swing low that's a little bit higher. I like to stretch it out and try to get it as perfect as I can, something like that. So now we have our bottom trend line drawn here, correct? And if you're looking at this, this is more of a triangle pattern at this point than anything else. We have more so a pennant, but again, I call all of these flag patterns. At this point, what are we waiting on though? At this point, what we want to see is a breakout of this bottom trend line before we start seeing candles with no space above the 20 period moving average. So if the 20 period moving average is doing this and this is our candle, then do we still have a valid opportunity to trade this? No, we don't because now we have space between the 20 period moving average and a candle. But as long as this does not happen, we consistently look for the breakout of the bottom of that trend line. Let's see if we get it. We're still in a valid opportunity. And there we go. Is that a break of the trend line? Yes, it is. So at this point, we would go ahead, set our position up, have stops and targets set, blah, 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 blah. And then we would just let the market do its thing. Holy cow. That didn't work at all. Well, guys, I just wanted to show you an example of a losing trade because this is the reality of trading. Trades lose. This is not going to win 100% of the time and nothing you trade is. This was a great example of the perfect setup considering the rules that we've just laid out for this flag pattern strategy, but the market not cooperating with that analysis whatsoever and quickly stopping us out for a loss on this trade. Dealing with losses is going to be a huge part of your trading career. We'll talk more about that later in the video. Let's go over one more bearish example of this strategy and then we'll talk about entries, stops, and targets. Well, just stops and targets. Entries are a breakout of the trend line of the flag pattern. Okay, so here we have another bearish example. We have a push down that breaks below the 20 period moving average. What I want you to do is guess or estimate where you would be drawing your trend line in this specific flag pattern. I'll give you a couple of seconds. Pause the video if you need to. I'm going to go ahead and move on. At this point, we have the market pushing down, right? We're below our 20 period moving average. That's the first condition. The market touches the 20 period moving average. Second condition. What's the next thing we wait on? We want to see a higher swing low compared to these bodies than our initial swing low before the pullback. So with that being the case, we have the pullback that touches the 20 period moving average. We then have a push down and a higher swing low again in terms of bodies. So with that being the case, and I know it's not really a higher swing low in terms, actually it is in terms of wicks as well. But again, wicks do not matter with this strategy. So this wick could be doing this. I would still count this as a flag pattern because I'm only counting the bodies of candles with this strategy. So if in your guess or estimation, you said this is the way this flag pattern would look, you would be absolutely correct. This would be our flag pattern. So we have our push down to our flag pattern. We then have our breakout candle. So those were a few examples and a little bit of the nuance rules in terms of what we're looking for in terms of conditions. And we enter based on the breakout of this pattern. At least that's how I enter. 
as an aggressive trader. I am an aggressive trader. Now I'm going to give you some examples of different ways you could enter if you are less aggressive and also how to play stops and targets, or at least how I play stops and targets. You can always feel free to change up things that you see on this channel and be a mad scientist. That's what creates great traders and great strategies is test, test, test. Test a bunch of different ways of entering. Test a bunch of ways of placing stops and targets, but I will give you the exact stops and targets that I used to produce the results I got on the New Zealand Yen, and we'll go ahead and start that part of the video right now. All right, so firstly, let's talk about a couple of different ways you can enter this type of flag pattern. So here we have a valid flag pattern. Why is it a valid flag pattern? Because of the fact that market is pushing up, we are above the 20 period moving average. We then get a pullback to the 20 period moving average without creating space below it. With that being the case, we now are looking for a lower swing high. Do we get that? Compared to our previous swing high that caused the pullback? Yes, we do. We have a slanting trend line at this point. Now, what are we waiting on? For an entry, the first way and the way that this testing was done, the way I enter these as an aggressive trader is just by waiting for the breakout candle. I just want to see a candle that breaks out of the top of the trend line. So for me, this would be my entry. So before we talk about stops and targets, let's go ahead and talk about the other way that you could enter if you were more conservative as a trader. You could wait instead of entering right there for the breakout to continue. And then such as this, we have our breakout candle. We then have a higher push up to a new breakout. And then after the higher push up, a pullback to our trend line and a green candle. Once you get the pullback and then you get a green candle there, that would be a more conservative way to enter. Would be waiting for the breakout to initially occur and then waiting for a pullback and confirmation that we're using that trend line as support now by this big green candle. That would be a more conservative way. But throughout the rest of the video, I'm going to speak as if we're using just the original breakout candle because that is how I personally trade this. Now for stops, you will have to understand what the ATR indicator is. The average true range just gives you the average movement of the last 14 candles. That's all I use it for is stops and targets for the most part. And for this specific strategy, I'm using the value of the ATR indicator, which by the way, I did a full video on the ATR indicator. It'll be in the top right hand corner of the screen. So if you don't understand what it is, then you can use that. But just understand that this value is 11, not 117. So what I do is the value of the ATR indicator below the entry candle. So right now, the low of the entry candle is right here. So with that being the case, I go 11 pips or excuse me, what is the ATR? It is right at 11. So I would go 11 pips below that. So eight plus 11 is 19 pips. After I have my stop loss set, I do a set target at a 1.2 to one reward to risk ratio. So this is exactly how a bullish trade would look. We would have the entry for me, at least being the breakout of this specific candle. I would then have a stop loss one ATR, which is just an indicator you can find on any trading platform, look up average true range and it will be there. And it just shows you the average of the last 14 candles. That way your stop loss is in line with the current volatility of the current asset that you are trading. I use this indicator in all different markets, stocks, crypto, and in Forex. But essentially I use the value of that indicator, which is 11 pips below our entry candle for my stop loss. And then my target is set at a fixed 1.2 to one reward to risk ratio. This trade, as you can see, hit targets very easily. So that's the way I set stops and targets. Just flip it upside down for bearish versions. This video is getting much longer than I really wanted it to be. So with that being the case, we're going to move on now and I'm going to show you an example of how I would trade this exact strategy in the stock market. And by the way, because I did not mention it earlier, I primarily trade this strategy on the one hour chart, but it can be traded on any time frame. excuse me, tested on any time frame. Do not go out and just trade this blindly. You'll have to test it beforehand. So feel free to test it on the time frame of your choice. Let's move on now though and talk about how I would be trading this in the stock market. Okay, so as I said, for the stock market, I would be adding a volume indicator to this strategy because I wanna see volume come into the market on my entry candle. So at this point, do we have a valid setup here on AMC? 
Well, here on AMC, we had a market that was pushing up. We ended up breaking above our 20 period moving average. That meets our first rule. We have a full pullback that touches the 20 period moving average and we don't have any space below it. Do we then get a new swing high? We do right here. So we go from bodies to bodies. And then as we do so, what we end up getting is our breakout candle right here. But does this breakout candle have heavy volume compared to the previous volume? No, it looks almost exactly the same. So in this specific scenario, only in the stock market, what I do is wait for volume to enter the market, which happened on the very next candle. So in the stock market, once I find all of my conditions, I do wait for this for volume to enter the market before placing my entry. So in this case, my entry would be right here. The ATR of AMC is $1.12. So down to the low of my candle is $1.50 roughly. That plus $1.12 would be $2.62 in total. $2.62 is right there. I wanna get a 1.2 to one reward to risk ratio out of this. So right there is a 1.2 to one. I don't even know if this would hit targets. Let's hit play and see. And we did in fact end up pushing up high enough to clip our targets. So that depending on the volume of traders that were willing to sell at this exact price would have likely hit our target here in this case. But I did wanna give you guys who just trade in the stock market an example of how I would use this exact strategy while trading stocks. So here is our Euro New Zealand trade. As you can see, we're up a little bit of money here, but this trade has gotten nowhere near the target or the stop loss. So it's not going to be played out before we end the video. Before we do though, I want you to understand that a strategy is not everything you need while you're trading. You've probably seen me draw this if you've been a part of the channel before, but this is what I call the triangle of trading success. In the middle of this triangle are all of the traders that make money. In order to get there, you need what we talked about today, which is a profitable rules-based strategy you can stay consistent to. That is a huge piece of the puzzle, but it's not all you need. You can have an incredible strategy that makes money hand over fist, that's a winning strategy of 70% accurate with over a one-to-one -one reward to risk ratio, but you could ruin your chances of making money with that strategy if you have a poor risk management plan or if you have poor trading psychology and you're constantly moving stops or moving targets or constantly switching strategies. If you have either of the, these two that is missing in your arsenal of trading, if you're missing a good risk management plan or you don't have a handle on your trading psychology, then you will never get to the point of making money as a trader. So although a strategy is very important, just like having a fast car does not make you a Formula One driver and having a basketball does not make you Michael Jordan or LeBron James, having a strategy will not make you a professional money making trader. In order to get to any level of major success, every athlete that's ever gotten there has made sacrifices and put in massive amounts of work to get there. And the work I'm talking about is building a strategy or learning one from someone, then back testing it and then optimizing that strategy so that you're only trading it on the best pairs possible, then creating a risk management plan around it, then creating a trading plan around it. Ask yourself if you have done all of those steps. If you haven't, that is the reason you haven't made it here. There are plenty of strategies everywhere on YouTube. I have at least four strategies that I've traded profitably throughout my trading career that I give away for free here on YouTube, this being one of them. Strategies are, out, strategies are out there. That's not what you're missing. What you're missing is the work afterwards, which is what anyone who is highly successful has had to put in, is the work to get there. But you can work really hard in the wrong direction and end up getting nowhere. For example, if I told you to walk uh, from where you are to a point that's about a mile away, but I didn't tell you what direction your destination was, then you just had to guess what if you went the absolute opposite way on accident? Instead of going the way you're supposed to and your destination being a mile away, you would have to travel all the way around the entire earth to get to your destination because you started in the wrong direction. You would work really hard, but really hard in the wrong direction, which does not make your trading journey easy. In the case of working hard in the wrong direction, your journey becomes nearly impossible.
And that is why I want to share this triangle of trading success with you is to give you the right direction to go. You may be someone working hard at trading, but you didn't know what your next steps were. Well, right now you have a strategy. Back test it. That's your next steps. All that consists of is looking through historic data for the rules we just discussed and seeing how many times it worked versus didn't work. What kind of reward to risk ratio did you get on average? Do that for a number of currency pairs, then optimize for the best currency pairs. After you've done that, create a risk management plan that aligns with your personal risk tolerance. This way you stay out of your emotions. No emotions because you're risking so little that losing the trades doesn't affect you to the point you get emotional. You don't have FOMO because you know your strategy is proven to be profitable because you've back tested it. So having a good risk management plan and a strategy in place, very important to control emotions, right? But having good trading psychology, a lot of times comes from these two things comes from having a good risk management plan, comes from having a strategy that you've tested and optimized and seen to be profitable in the past. If you do those things, you're going to have a recipe for good trading psychology. And if you can accomplish all three of these, you will inevitably become a money making trader. Now, if you want a mentor to help you through the process of learning all three of these, then we do have some space available in the EAP training program. I'll leave a link for that in the description below. Plus, you can go onto the website you see on the screen right now. In this program, I'm going to teach you the strategies that I actually use on a daily basis, as well as provide you with three to five trade alerts each week of trades I'm actually placing using the strategies that you learn. It comes with a full training course that not only will teach you strategies, but teach you risk management the actual risk management plan that I personally use and how to figure out your own personal risk tolerance. It also will teach you a bunch of different ways to work on your trading psychology. And throughout this entire process, you will have me there as your mentor and I will be available to you through something I call priority email, which means that I'm answering every question you have personally. This program also comes with a video I do each and every Monday telling traders the trades that I'm looking to take throughout the next week and much, much more. But another incredible part of the EAP training program is that it has a 60 day money back guarantee. So if you have any problems at all, email my support staff and we will get you refunded ASAP. With that said, kind of a risk-free offer if that's something you're interested in. Again, link is in the description along with on the page. Now, if it's not something you're interested in, that's totally fine as well. Just be sure you keep it locked here by subscribing. Be sure to click that like button. Be sure to comment if you made it to the end. And I'll talk to you guys in the next video. See you soon.